Hello, I'm Dr. Rosemary Dagner, creator of International Graduate Student Connections, and I help graduate students be successful as they navigate their way through graduate school. I've been taking you through a series of videos guiding you through the top three principles to graduate school success. In the previous video, we covered the possibility principle where you learned to acknowledge possibilities, embrace them, and then share possibilities with others. In this, our second video, I'm going to be sharing with you the organization principle, where you're going to learn the importance of organizing your thoughts, the content of your material, and your time. So let's get started with organizing in general. Organization is really the process of creating a system as you build something larger. Do you have a system? Did you know you are actually working your way through a system as you are in graduate school? You're taking one class at a time, one semester at a time, writing one paper at a time, and of course completing one chapter of your thesis or dissertation at a time and you are building towards something greater, that diploma when you finish with your degree. By using the organization principle, you can develop a system to organize your thoughts, your content, and your time while completing your academic goal. Does that sound good to you? Let's get started with that whole process of organizing your thoughts. Do you ever get confused when a professor hands you a new assignment and you look at that? Maybe you're a little bit overwhelmed. It looks like it's a huge assignment. You're not sure what to do or where to even get started. Feeling overwhelmed. If you feel overwhelmed at that point, then you might ask yourself, what do I need? And where do I go to get started on this whole project? Let me give you some suggestions on how to overcome the feeling of being overwhelmed. And that is to do something. Create some manageable parts to that assignment or that chapter in the dissertation or thesis that you're working on. Look at the instructions. Even if it's the dissertation or thesis, you've been given instructions on what is supposed to be included in that for your assignment. Break it down. How many pages should it be? What are the individual sections that need to be within the paper or the thesis or dissertation? How many references are you trying to incorporate into it? Are you being asked to address a particular problem? Are you expected to provide a solution within there. Those are all parts of the greater whole that you're working on. So by looking at those individual parts, you are actually organizing your thoughts. Now, let's consider organizing our content. We're going to take that thought organization a step further and apply it to the content. You've turned your paper in. You've turned your draft of your uh, chapter for your thesis in. And your professor comes back to you and says, I don't understand. Yeah, many of the elements are there, but I'm having a difficult time following the organization of what you've written. What do you do then? Well, let's be proactive and look at organizing our content even before we submit a draft or an assignment. Ask yourself, are you including all of those parts? Remember when you were organizing your thoughts and you broke things out into all of those different pieces? Well, go back. Are you sure that you are actually including all of those pieces? Confirm that for yourself. And then ask yourself, have I put them in the right place? Is there some flow? Is there some logic behind why you included those elements in the areas that you included them. And it's very important that when you're organizing the content 
that you have a very clear introduction, body, and conclusion to the overall work that you're, you're focusing on. In your introduction, include a preview of what the entire chapter or that paper is going to be about. Then you go on into the body of that paper or chapter and you follow that order that you set forth in that preview statement in your introduction. And that starts to make a logical flow to everything in the body part of the, the paper that you're writing. And then we also need to have an ending, the conclusion. You summarize the content of the paper or the chapter. And most likely you're expected to have a conclusion, some concluding remarks about what you have just written. All right, we have our thoughts organized. We have the content material organized. How about organizing our time? As a graduate student, you are busy with so many activities in your academics, in your personal life, just very busy every day. You have a job that you're doing perhaps while you're in graduate school. So we need to be able to organize our time. When you're given a deadline, a due date, for a paper to be turned in or that draft of a chapter. Do you kind of panic that, oh my goodness, that's just around the corner. I've got to get this ready. You want to start planning just as far in advance as you can and organize your time. I recommend that you organize small blocks of time, large blocks of time, and then work in a way where you can combine all of the efforts from those short and larger blocks of time. For instance, if you are riding the bus to campus, can you take advantage of that 10 or 15 minute bus ride? You could be thinking about the instructions that the professor has given to you. How about the short amount of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes that it might take you to walk to the building where your class is meeting? Can you think of some questions that you might be able to ask during class or a response that you have that the professor set forth for you to think about in the previous class? You can actually use 5, 10, 15 minutes, small blocks of time to your benefit. There are some activities in graduate school that require larger blocks of time. When you're going to the library or you're doing some database searches for literature on your computer, even if it's at home. It takes a little bit more time to do that. You might schedule 30 minutes, 45 minutes. There are also times that you might want to schedule an hour to meet with some classmates to discuss an assignment. And you could also schedule a time to meet with your professor. Keep track of your time. Make yourself a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a semester schedule and try to stick to that schedule as best you can. Take advantage of all your time, whether it's five minutes, an hour, or an entire weekend. When you combine all of those efforts, everything really starts to come together for you and you will reduce that chance that you have some panic. Maybe you'll even have an opportunity to sit back and relax just a little while before you submit the material to your professor. Keep your organization simple. Whether you're organizing your thoughts, the content of your material, or your time, keep it simple. As you do that, you are going to feel more empowered and in control of your graduate studies. So far, we have looked at the, of course, the organization principle from today's video. Previously, we had the possibility principle, and our next video is going to focus on the action principle. I want you to move forward with completing your graduate degree. Go out there, look for those possibilities, organize yourself, and get ready to take action.